TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Unidentified aircraft struck multiple targets in Syria last night, believed to be Iranian-controlled weapons caches in an attack attributed to Israel. Deepening relations between Hamas and the Taliban are seemingly raising concerns in Israel over expected collaboration between the two Islamist groups. Israel reaches an agreement with Qatar over delivery of humanitarian aid for the Gaza Strip. Unidentified aircraft struck several targets in Syria late last night, destroying multiple warehouses which, according to local reports, caused secondary explosions upon impact by the incoming projectiles. At approximately 11 o'clock, projectiles launched from Lebanese airspace were identified by Syrian air defenses, who consequently fired a number of interceptors in an effort to thwart the incoming missiles from reaching their intended targets. However, despite Syrian military sources quoted by the regime-run Sana News Agency insisting that they managed to shoot down most of the incoming projectiles, a number of warehouses situated near the Damascus International Airport and separately near Kara City and the mountainous Kalamun region adjacent to Syria's border with Lebanon were utterly destroyed. According to the mayor of Kara City, who was interviewed by the local radio station, four civilians were killed and three others were injured in the pinpointed airstrike. Nevertheless, intelligence sources later confirmed to TV7 that three of those killed were identified as Iranian proxy militants that were engaged in smuggling activities. No further details were given. Subsequently, the Damascus regime, whose patron Russia maintains a technical deconfliction mechanism with Israel that effectively informs its local forces in Syria of pending Israeli strikes shortly before those are executed, immediately after the attack pointed a blaming finger toward Jerusalem. However, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm nor deny its responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment. With that being said, it is important to know that both targeted areas are known to be locations of transit for smuggled munitions, utilized systematically by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards and its local militias. Separately, in other yet related news, the commander of the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, Major General Stefano del Col, published a statement on his Twitter account in which he stressed, quote, Overflights of Lebanese territory by Israeli fighter aircraft are violations of UN Resolution 1701 and of Lebanon's sovereignty. He further reiterated his call on the IDF to desist from such actions, which according to General Del Col, undermine unifil efforts to contain tensions and build confidence among the local population. The statement by the Unifil head of mission coincides with a statement by Lebanon's caretaker Prime Minister Hassan Diab, who voiced outrage over, quote, the repeated infringements on Lebanon's sovereignty by Israel. Diab, a staunch ally of the Iranian proxy Hezbollah, further instructed his permanent representative to the United Nations to file an urgent complaint to the Security Council and demanded that the international community condemn Israel's aggressive actions and take steps to protect Lebanon's sovereignty and Resolution 1701, which was the legal framework in the United Nations that ended the 2006 war between Hezbollah and Israel. Meanwhile, amid the ongoing developments in Afghanistan, which are expected to have inevitable ramifications for the Middle East, Residents in a number of the region's capitals have voiced mixed reactions to the Taliban's rise to power. The 
بيأثر على الدول كلها مش على مصر بس مش مصر لوحدها أو أو الدول الأوروبية أو دول الخليج لا. كلهم هذا الظهور الإسلامي القوي هاي الفترة هو بيزيد الإرهاب اللي نحن عانينا فيه إن كان بسوريا أو بالعراق ويعني نحن قدرنا نوقفه على حدود الأردن فنحن خايفين من رجوعهم من جديد شيء مفرح بالنسبة إلي يعني كشخص إنه الدولة أخذت حقوقها وطلعت العدو منها بس أنا ما بتمنى إلا أنها تنجح في حكومتها أفغانستان ما حدث في أفغانستان يعزز قناعة العديد من الأنظمة السياسية العربية بأن الدولة الأمريكي في العالم العربي والإسلامي بين هلالين في تراجع يعني هذه النتيجة ستعزز أيضا من شعور الدول العربية والأنظمة العربية بأهمية إيجاد تحالفات جديدة ولازم كلياتنا نوقف سوا لحتى نمنع هيك شيء يصير لأنه ما بصير يعني هيك شيء يصير بحق المرة وبحق أي حدا وطن عربي يعني أكيد ومسلم اللي بده يعطي ولاءه لأمريكا بده تكون نهايات هيك يعني الجماعات الجماعات المتطرفة بتدعمها دائما أمريكا إسرائيل كل الدول المعادية لمنطقتنا شوف <تصفيق> فيديوهات وهاي على مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي وغيره أه كنت بتعاطف كبير معاهم لان انا كم مريت بهاي الحاله قبل ومدينتي كلها كم مرت بهاي الحاله وايضا يعني اكتشفت انه هاي الدنيا ما بها امان يعني ممكن باي لحظه غدا بعد غدا يصير بينا نحن نفس الشيء بعد ما او ممكن باي بقعه من العالم اعتصر قلبي الما على الشيء اللي شفته اني تذكرت اللي راح يعاني الشعب الافغاني من نساء واطفال في ظل في ظل الطالبان وظل افكارهم وظل قيودهم وظل عقيدتهم التي يؤمنون بها والتي يريدون ان ان يفرضونها على الشعب بعد ما كان في ظل حكومه شرعيه تماما وبكل اهل غزه يعني يعني كثير مبسوطين باللي حدث في افغانستان خاصه انه اهالينا اللي غاد موجودين حرروا بلادهم عانوا كثير من الظلم كثير استمر لسنوات عديده وهم بيعانوا من الظلم والاحتلال الامريكي It is important to know that the Taliban and the Islamist Hamas organization have forged a close alliance over the course of the past several years which included multiple meetings between their respective leaders Therefore when the Taliban strolled into the Afghan capital Kabul Following NATO's disengagement, the rulers of Gaza praised their Afghan counterparts for what they refer to be, quote, this American defeat. تبارك حركة حماس للشعب الأفغاني المسلم خروج قوات الاحتلال الأمريكي من الأرض الأفغانية هذا الاندحار الأمريكي جاء بعد مشوار نضال وطني طويل خاضوا الشعب الأفغاني ونهنئ قيادة حركة طالبان على هذا الإنجاز والانتصار للشعب الأفغاني نتمنى. في هذه المرحلة الجديدة من حياة الشعب الأفغاني الوحدة والازدهار والتقدم. It is worth noting that the deepening relations between Hamas and the Taliban have elevated vigilance among Israeli security officials who assess that the latter will aim to assist the Palestinian Islamists in Gaza in a number of logistical matters in particular, including smuggling of weapons. Meanwhile, despite known efforts by Hamas to rehabilitate its military capacity after sustaining significant blows during the last round of hostilities against Israel, namely Operation Guardian of the Walls, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz announced that following extensive talks with Qatari officials, Jerusalem agreed to a new mechanism that will facilitate the transfer of funds to the Gaza Strip for the purpose of improving basic humanitarian conditions. Before three months ago, I said that what happened was not what happened. The military, we do not receive any attention or attention to the people in their own and the damage of Israel. And in the United States, we are focused on the relationship with the Palestinians and the people who are in the area, so that we allow the Palestinians in the area את התנאים ההומניטריים הבסיסיים הנדרשים להמשך החיים, לצד המשך המאמצים להשבת השבויים והנעדרים הביתה. כחלק מהמדיניות הזו, החלטנו גם לשנות ולשפר את מנגנון העברת הסיוע ההומניטרי של קטר לתושבי הרצועה, וזאת בכדי לוודא שהכסף מגיע למי שבאמת נזקק לו. לא צריך כך, 
עמדתי בקשר עם גורמים רשמיים בקטר שהבינו את הצורך הישראלי, ואני מודה להם על כך. במהלך הימים האחרונים הגענו לסיכום כי לצד הדלק שנקנה על ידי האו"ם באמצעות המימון של קטר, יוכנס כסף שנועד לסייע למאות אלפי נזקקים באמצעות מנגנון שבו האו"ם יעביר את הכסף לבנק בעזה ומשם ימשכו הנזקקים ישירות את הקצבה כשלישראל ישנה יכולת הפיקוח על רשימת הזכאים. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to thank Qatar, which does not maintain official relations with Israel, for its constructive role in facilitating the agreement alongside the United States, the United Nations and Egypt. I would like to thank Qatar for taking a huge role in the region, and to thank the United States, 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 אני מבקש להודות גם למצרים שלוקחת חלק חיוני בשמירה על השקט באזור ולכל השותפים שסייעו בקידום התהליך שמטרתו לאפשר סיוע למי שזקוק לו תוך שמירה על ביטחון ישראל. I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up India in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.